Welcome everyone to Sunday Morning Worship this Memorial Day Sunday. I am Reverend Michelle Wiley, Pastor Shelley of People's United Methodist Church in South Thomaston, which is where I have gathered today, John Street United Methodist Church in Camden, and the First Congregationalist Church also in South Thomaston on Route 131. Our welcoming song is Part of the Family, verse number two. If you know it, um, I'll uh, give you the lyrics. It's the children and elders, middlers and teens, singles, doubles, and in-betweens, young, strong 85ers, streetwise 16s. We are a part of the family. Our favorite line, greeters, shoppers, long time and new. Nobody here has a claim on a pew. So whether we're many, whether we're few, we are part of the family. Come in, come in and sit down. You are a part of the family. We are lost and we are found. We are a part of the family. Children and elders, middlers and teens, singles and doubles and in-betweens, strong 85ers and streetwise 16s, we are a part of the family, greeters and shoppers, long time and new. Nobody here has a claim on a pew. So whether we're many or whether we're few, we are a part of the family. Come in, come in, sit down. You are a part of the family. We are lost and we are found. We are a part of the family. sit down. You are a part of the family. We are lost and we are found. We are a part of the family. I um, hope you have your home hymnal with you. I sent out the hymns and prayers that we're going to be using today. Um, so go ahead and grab that hymnal. Um, if not, I have printed out in large print um, on pieces of paper some of the prayers um, that we'll be using today. So um, I'll just kind of hold them up to the screen. Hopefully you'll see them um, in the right direction. So the a prayer of ascension is number 323 in your hymnal. I'll give you a second to find that. And right there, I think. Together. Everlasting God, your eternal Christ once dwelt on earth, confined by time and space. Give us faith to discern in every time and place the presence among us of the one who is head over all things and fills all even Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord. Amen. The call to worship. Clap your hands, shout for joy. Our Lord Jesus reigns on the throne of glory. We open our hearts to the ascended Lord who sits on the throne of glory. Our opening hymn is number 185. When morning gilds the skies. I'll give you a second to find that. Here we go. Let's see if I can get it to play.
iTunes. There. Great. Join me, if you would, please, in a prayer of confession. O oh Lord, we have not lived our lives as kingdom people. We place our crowns on hopelessness, fear, and selfishness. We are ruled by our schedules and our need for control. We make kings of the things we acquire and queens of our immediate desires. We forget that your kingdom draws near to us here on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, we pray, for all these things. Come, Lord Jesus, open in us the gates of your kingdom. Amen. Our assurance of grace, there is your part right there. Almost got it. Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. There we go. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ blesses us and calls us kingdom people. In the name of the reigning Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, the ascended Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done, so loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gates that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Amen. We move into our time of scriptures. If I can find them. Uh, I'll be right back. Got to grab a Bible. So today we start with the, the scripture in Acts, um, which is the very, very first scripture uh, um, that is in the book of Acts. Acts is the continuation of Luke's gospel. He's writing to, um, we think, uh, a convert. Um, he names him as Theoph um, Theophilus. And so in Luke's gospel, he has Jesus ascending in Bethany um, and tells this story. And then we move here into Acts and um, he, he has just a slightly different story because, of course, here in Acts, um, the purpose for um, the writing of this part of the letter um, is soon to be revealed. So here we are, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning 
until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the world. When he had said this, as they were watching him, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men dressed in white robes stood with them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you up into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and, the, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as Jesus' brothers. And we go into the last portion of the letter of First Peter, chapters 4 and five. I covered a lot of this during um, during weekly prayers, so I'm going to just read certain segments of it, um, and in particular uh, the, the section that is listed in the lectionary. Let's see, where does this begin? Here we go, verse 12, chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are also blessed. Because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or a criminal or even as a mischief maker. Yet if any of you suffer as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear the name. For the time has come for judgment to begin within the household of God. It is 
as, as if it begins with if it begins with us what will the end be for those who do not obey the good news of god and then moving over to chapter five now as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of christ as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed i exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of god that is in your charge to exercise oversight to not under to exercise oversight not under compulsion but willingly as god would have you do it not for gains do not lord it over those who you charge by but by but be an example to the flock and when the chief shepherd appears you will win the crown of glory that never fades in the same way you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders and all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble so humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of god so that he may exalt you in due time cast all your anxiety upon god because god cares for you discipline yourselves keep alert like a roaring lion your adversary the evil one from prowls around looking for someone to devour resist the evil one be steadfast in your faith for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings and after you have suffered for a little while the god of all grace and mercy who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Here ends our scripture lessons for this day. May God add a blessing and an understanding of this holy word for our daily lives. Amen. So I, I mentioned that the, the book of Acts of the Apostles has a slightly different focus than Luke's gospel lesson that um, we've been reading through along with John's gospel. Each book, because it has a different author, has a different focus, as any writer would have. You know, there's, there's a reason why you're writing what you're writing and you're addressing a particular group of people. That's why we have the four Gospels. Each one has its own perspective, its own insights, its own experiences of Christ. And so we have in Acts now what is the call to the believers of Christ and the church in the world after Jesus has been ascended to heaven. So... So it is a refocusing of, of our attention from the heavenly and what is to be expected from the heavenly and where our lives are going after our death, as in Jesus, when he died. It is a refocusing of our lives back on the power and grace and presence of God here on earth and what we are supposed to do. So it's, it's wonderful to hear at this, this experience um, just prior to the ascension, to hear the disciples ask a very um, worldly question that has to do with kingly power. Um, and that is, is, is this the time? Is this the time when God is going to restore the old power of Israel 
is is this the time when we're going to be able to jump around and be in control is is this the time you know it's kind of like um getting the kids in the car and you're going on a road trip or maybe um you're you're going someplace special and you told the kids you know you'll see when we get there and and everybody gets in the car and you're waiting and it, and it seems like forever when you're a kid and you know the are we there yet oh are we there and then and then there's the the cries of oh i gotta go to the bathroom and oh can i have something to eat and and you know so and so won't stop touching me and i don't have enough room and can we open the windows and oh can i close the windows and oh i don't want to go anymore can we just turn around are we there yet are we to, are we to that new place are we back home are we there yet jesus says we'll never know when whether or not we're officially there yet so what does that mean if the the gospel the book of acts is refocusing us on our public lives and to seek god here in our personal lives here on earth excuse me yeah what would we do as persons what would we do that's different if we knew we were there yet Would you live your life differently if you knew tomorrow was the end of the world as we know it? Would you treat your family members any differently if you knew tomorrow Jesus was coming? Would you, would, would you spend your money differently if you knew that next week that the the second coming was going to happen would you all of a sudden make different decisions and start treating people differently and clean up your 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 house so it looks great so when the second coming comes you know everything looks really great you know who are you trying to impress who do we try to impress when we do that is, is this the time you know the the two the two men that appear after Jesus ascends to heaven, the two men in the white robes, right? They're supposed to be angels, angels and messengers. You, know, you look at the disciples and say the same thing that was said at Jesus' baptism and was said again at the transfiguration and is said again on this ascension. You know, yeah, it's, it's great to, to look at the heavens and to be in awe, because who wouldn't be, right? To see this person you love be lifted up and, and disappear, disappear into the great eternal. You know, it's, it's, it's okay to be in awe and wonder and mystified and amazed, but hey, hello, you're still here. It's time, it's time for you to get going. You know, Jesus gave you something to do. You're still here on this earth. Live the life you've been called to live on this earth. What would we do differently? Is this the time? We don't know if this is the time. What we do know is that this is our life in this time. And that the Holy Spirit comes to us in many ways because of our openness to the spirit and for the prayers that can lift us into that holy space and we can discern who and what we are going to do and just like today with the world seeming to be in such chaos and in such disarray and there's pain and suffering from flooding and there's pain and suffering from the the most significant um, her, uh, cyclone that has happened over um, in Bangladesh. And of course, we still have this pandemic going on. The world seems chaotic and there is incredible amounts of suffering. The church 
churches in Asia Minor, our modern day Turkey, that the letter to First Peter is written to, um, it says, yeah, there's going to be suffering. You will suffer. And we will suffer for being in Christ's name. You know? But that suffering, when done in faith, and holding fast to that which you believe in, in God, and God's immense mercy and compassion, that we will, we will find relief. We will be lifted from the suffering into a newness of what it is we don't know. Just like, is this the time? We don't know. But we will be moved into a newness of life. And so, and so in 1 Peter, they're encouraged to continue to find where God is already at work. And to participate in those opportunities of grace. Right? It says to be steadfast even, even when evil is about you. And to know that when you confront evil, that evil is going to push back and do everything it can to, to counter your decisions, to get you to question your beliefs, right? Like Job, um, to, to try and, and move you into that way of thinking. You know, I, 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 I think of teenagers with the struggles with being tempted into drugs and alcohol and, and, um, and early, early sex out, out of mutual respectful relationships. And, you know, the language is all around you and evil doesn't always look horrendous. Sometimes evil is very sly and cunning and just seems like a temptation that we don't realize the harmful, destructive effects until after we've entered into it. And so in 1 Peter, it says, as was being told to the disciples who saw Jesus ascend, you know, live the good life now. Just live God's call upon your life now. Don't worry about whether or not salvation is tomorrow. Don't worry about whether or not Christ is coming in a week. Don't worry about whether or not this is when the power of God is going to overcome all evil in the world. Don't worry about those things. Worry about living the call to be just and fair and compassionate now. Just do. Because in that action, the suffering will be lifted. We will be raised out of it. And, and like it says in the first, in that first Peter passage, right, we will be lifted up after this time of suffering. And the whole world is suffering, right? Even in First Peter, we hear, remember your brothers and sisters are undergoing the same suffering as you are. We are not alone in this suffering. And it says that even after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace and mercy, I love this, calls you into the glory of Christ and will restore you and support you and strengthen you and establish you. It's about restoration and renewal. It's about offering of opportunities of hope and well-being and new life and new ways of being. And so how might we find those new ways of being as we move forward in this time? Um, you know, the council will be discussing yet again um, what comes next as we move, as the state of Maine moves into phase two. And um, drive-in worship is being offered um, as, as okay with protocols and even some inside in-person worship with, ex, ex, um, with very precise protocols to be followed. 
Um, no singing if you're indoors. Um, so what is this new thing? We have been inconvenienced and we long to become the people of God gathered together again in physical space. But for now, we are gathering virtually and we are calling one another and we are living as the apostles and the disciples were told to do at Jesus' ascension. Hey, stop looking around. Stop wondering when Jesus is going to lift this. Stop worrying about all of that. You've got life to live. You've got love to bear. You have hope to bring. Go do it. Do it the best way you can under your circumstances. And in that suffering and in those times of joy that we find during the days, um, we will be lifted and we will be restored. We will be restored to worship again. And we will be supported by the Holy Spirit, whether it's through letter writing and phone calls and Facebook Live and Zoom, or, or we will be gathered in our cars, tooting our horns and flashing our windshield wipers. And we will have strength because we will open ourselves to prayer. And God will establish us, establish us in faith that we may overcome all that is brought forth to us in this time. My friends, I wish you much blessing and much grace in the coming days. Today is Memorial Day Sunday. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. So I invite you to take some time if you have the opportunity to, to think and pray for those who lost their lives um, fighting in the wars and to maybe visit a grave or a cemetery if you get the chance. Um, at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, um, trumpeters across the, across the United States have been invited to pull their trumpets out and play taps at three o'clock. Um, so, so maybe there's a trumpet player in your neighborhood and you may hear taps, um, not taps, excuse me. Um, yes, taps, you will hear taps played um, by a trumpeter in your area. So um, grace and peace to all those who are remembering loved ones um, on this weekend and on Memorial Day. Amen. So a reminder that we are still welcoming your pledges and offerings at People's United Methodist Church. Um, you can mail those to P.O. Box 83 in South Thomaston. Um, at the Finnish Congregationalist Church, you can mail yours to P.O. Box 293 in South Thomaston. <coughs> Excuse me. And John Street, Joyce and Bob Smith have... Ex um, have opened their post office box for you to mail. Joyce is our financial secretary. So you can mail your church pledge or offering directly to Joyce. So write J-S-U-M-C, care of Joyce Smith, P.O. Box 295. That's Rockport. And the zip code is 0485. Six. So I hope you will find time to um, consider supporting the ongoing ministries of all of our churches and to um, be a part of that joy of giving to spread the news of Jesus Christ in the world. I invite you to a time of prayer. These intercessions were written by um, Reverend Chang. Um, of the Metro Boston area, and he used that wonderful phrase, is this the time? So um, that is why I'm using his intercessory prayer. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, like disciples, we urge you to turn, we urge, let me start again, please. God of heaven on earth, like disciples, we feel urged to turn to you with questions that are in our troubled and anxious hearts. 
even after you have promised the gift of the Holy Spirit in and among us. Is this the time for you to restore the booming economy and the stock markets? Help us remember our baptism and empower us to be the witnesses to your deep concerns for the poor and the neglected among us. Is this the time for you to restore worship on our church properties and buildings inside our buildings? Renew the baptism of the Holy Spirit in us and help us grow to worship you in spirit and truth no matter where we worship and praise you. Is this the time for you to restore our freedom to move and gather as we want? Help us remember Jesus who, was freely, who freely bound himself to the path of the cross for the sake of all people. Shower the Holy Spirit on us that we may bear the fruit of patience and self-control for the sake of all. Is this the time for you to restore the ways things were before the pandemic? Restore in us the power of your spirit that we may restore in every heart and in every land the way of love that scatters every fear, the way of empathy and compassion that unites all people the way of patience that spreads hope, the way of freedom that serves others, the way of peace that expands the justice to all, the way of worship that delights in God, the way of prayer that moves every heart closer to God, and the way of Christ that redeems and makes all things new. Let us be in a spirit of silent prayer as we lift our own joys and concerns to God. For Marty and Bill and Jeff and all families who are trying to find safe ways to gather together as the, the gatherings um, are, are and pro protocols are being slightly uh, relaxed at this time. Uh, prayers for those who have lost loved ones in the recent days of comfort and support. Prayers for those who have entered into the hospital for ongoing conditions and illnesses, that they may be safe and they may be well and they may be healed. Oh, and for a joy, um, for those who are getting married today, um, those of you who know Kathy Bernier, um, she is getting married to her, her longtime partner of, oh my gosh, three years now, I think, three or four years now. Um, so today they are getting married. So let us share a blessing and uh, a wonderful um, hope for their relationship to blossom and grow in Christ. Oh, 
Oh, holy and wondrous God, we pray this in all things in the name of Jesus the Christ, our risen Savior, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, my friends. Um, enjoy this beautiful, wonderful day. Get outside if you get a chance. Um, do something good for yourself and your family, as well as for others. Um, I see some comments over here on the side. Um, let me see if I can say, oh, Richard and Mary say hi. So do Tom and Pam Boland. Um, Kearney says, um, can a day be more beautiful than this now in the birds chirping wildly in the background? Just listen to them singing. Hallelujah. Absolutely, Kearney. That's awesome. And uh, I, Susan Jones has left a wonderful smiley face. She's enjoying the worship and the sun. So blessings to all of you. That is just great. Our closing hymn is number 555 in your hymnals, Forward Through the Ages. Um, Susan and I have been playing with creating accompaniments so that not everything is on the guitar or on my, my uke. So she, uh, she has made the the accompaniment for forward through the ages um so if you find that we will sing that together see if i can get it to play played earlier. Let me try this. Isn't that something? Technology, you got to love it. I'm hoping to try a separate link. Oh my goodness. Here it comes.
Sunday, and whether we are gathered together or not, um, let us all don the color red or colors of flame red and orange and yellow um, together somewhere, either on our cars or our mailboxes or in our windows um, or on our clothing. So next Sunday is Pentecost, um, the coming of the Spirit, and may we, like the disciples, take a, a moment to be amazed and in awe of the Spirit coming to us. Um, but then let us move into action. Um, let us close with the benediction by John Wesley. Um, and we're going to use this one pretty much all, all summer long. Together, do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Grace and peace to you, my friends. Enjoy this day. God bless. Amen.